Well, today we're going to be speaking with Mike Cargyle. Mike Cargyle is running for Congress in California's 35th congressional district. Uh, I believe, Mike, you're the only congressional candidate this cycle who it has been unendorsed by the Republican Party. Is that is that a correct credential that you have? Yes, actually, I am the only congressional candidate in the nation who's been unendorsed twice now by the Republican Party for being what they consider too conservative. So give me an was there communication? Did they tell you on what issues you're just too far to the right? No, actually, they scrolled. We uh, a few weeks ago, they had an unendorsement meeting of their board of directors. Yeah. And they said, here, you've got two minutes to talk. And I said, talk about what? <laughs> what, what do you want to talk about? And they said, well, watch this. And they rolled four minutes of memes off of Facebook that go all the way back to 2018. And I knew where this came from because this was how George Soros had attacked me in the last cycle. Oh, Soros said, is going after you. He has. And, and so the Republican Party is using the Soros playbook. Uh, he came after me with Media Matters and Axios last time. Trying Would to you say me. Soros has infiltrated the Republican establishment at this point? Yes. Wow. Yes. So they uh, they came after me and tried to. Now, remember, back in 2020, this was the world of BLM riots and things like that. So he had unearthed a, a conversation, a private conversation I had had with a friend of mine about the use, the, the prevalent use of the N word in rap music. And I said, that's all. And so we're typing this out. And I said, that's all they're doing right now is building the songs around the N word. And I typed the N word out expressing, you know, my concern because right. I'm not a word you would ever use other than citing it, of course. Correct. Correct. But but you have when you're having a conversation in Messenger, you have to type it out. Right. And so they found this and said, oh, look, he's a racist. He's using the N word. And that was the narrative. And the New York Times picked it up, L.A. Times, Boston, you know, everywhere suddenly because of the environment at that time. Well, that is so, Mike, I, I don't want to let this slip because it, this is mind blowing. George Soros, who at the time of I guess when this happened was 90, I think he's 92 now, 90 year old George Soros obtained a private text communication that you had with someone else bemoaning the use of the N word in rap music. Is that right? Yes. Wow. That is an incredible story. And then they they take it and they go, look, see, white guy writes out the N word and he's a racist. And then, you know, then wow. they just sort of cask. And that's politics. it's almost unbelievable, to be perfectly frank. I think many in my audience will struggle to believe that. Well, it's what happened. And yeah. it was what was regurgitated by the California Republican Party a couple of weeks ago wow. as as further evidence. And they they said publicly in their meeting, uh, anyone can can look this up because it's all over the Internet now what yeah. they did to me. But but they said, how did this guy make it through the primary? We unendorsed him in 2020. And here he is again. And we're having <laughs> to unendorse him again. I'm the Mike, only listen. one in the country. What a, just as a gut check, we're doing this when we speak to 2022 candidates. And it's a weird question to ask, but I hope you'll indulge me. Who is the real president of the United States right now? Well, who's sitting in the White House? That's the that's you know, that's Joe Biden. Right. It, was he there legitimately? I don't know. Let's find out. I'm the. I'm on a lawsuit that's at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals right mm -hmm. now. Our oral arguments will begin September 23rd. And we're asking to forensically audit 13 counties in California. Most important lawsuit in the nation. Is it? And I, I want to get to the bottom of this question because people go, he's not legit. He is legit. It was stolen. It wasn't stolen. Folks, nobody knows. Well, but hold on a second, Mike. Let's see if we can break that down, though, because... So nobody knows we have we have results from California, right? The results from California are Biden got 11.1 million votes. Trump got six million votes. Overwhelming victory for Biden. Those are the results we have in order to say we don't know. We should have some reason to question those results. What reason do you have to question the results that make you say, I can't be confident that we have the real numbers? 
Well, David, if you were an Olympian and you ran a race and you got the gold medal, let's say you're like Usain Bolt. You okay. ran this race, you got the gold medal. Yep. What's the first thing they do after you set that world record? They do a blood test. Okay. And they they check to see if you have performance enhancing drugs in your system. Okay. That's an audit. They do an audit of your bloodstream. Why don't we do the same thing with the greatest race in the world, which is the U.S. presidential election? Well, I think one reason would be just the voter registration numbers in California are so lopsided towards Democrats that it's very hard to believe that there would be any real outcome there other than Biden easily winning. I mean, let, let me ask you a question. What do you suspect were the real results in California? I don't know. OK, nobody, no, but see, no, but it's it's a cop yeah. out to say you don't know. What reason do you have to question the results? Thousands and thousands of affidavits that have been submitted to my co-plaintiff under, you know, they uh, notarized and, uh, you know, the charge of perjury, if you lie on this, that they saw things that were not right, conducted in a myriad of places, including the polling places, including ballot drop off boxes. Nobody knows. And yet no one wants to look. And all I'm asking with my co-plaintiffs is let's open the hood and let's actually see what occurred. OK, there's but no when, when you look at the voter registration numbers, even if there were tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of these instances, right? California, only 24 percent of registered voters are Republicans. There's just no way Trump could have won. Well, I'm not uh, I'm not saying that. I'm oh. saying that did you know this? Okay. There are there are 2.8 million more registered voters in California than there are citizens. No, that is absolutely untrue. I we've got the data to prove it. My, well, I hope you my, will send it to me. My co-plaintiff is the Election Integrity Project California. Ah. OK, and they well, listen, because I don't year. have I mean, we yeah. get, I, I've not seen that. I mean, send it to me. Send it to me. You know, every state in which it has been claimed that there are more voters than citizens, it has been it has been debunked. And it well, seems have, in California it, it wouldn't be even close. Has any state done a forensic audit? Well, the states have done all sorts of evaluations and recounts and audits. But then someone no, always no, hold no, on. No. But Mike, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yes, on. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Someone then comes along and says, that's not the type of audit I meant. No, they've done recounts. Nobody has done an audit in, in like Arizona. An audit was done and it found no, no. Biden got even more votes. The the Arizona audit was not done properly. <laughs> what we're what we're looking for is this. We have three things in our complaint. Yeah. Here's the ballot. I want to look at the envelope and then let's look at the machine. OK, so they, they've had to look at the Im They've safeguarded the images of the, the, the hard drives. We have the voter rolls and let's compare all four of those. All right. Well, let's and do we're, that. We're, we're not going to be able to do it today. So in the interest well, of uh, we can start today, <laughs> we can start, No, I mean, you and I won't be able to. Now, listen, I want to ask no. you something. There's this guy who we, my audience knows him as Mike Pillow. He's the CEO of my pillow, Mike Lindell. But as a shorthand, we'll sometimes call him Mike Pillow or even just Pillow. Everybody knows who he is. Sure. He is obsessed with the machines and he actually wants to sue every machine. Are you where, where are you on the machines? Well, I think the machines need to be looked at. OK, I think just like Dinesh D'Souza's movie with uh, 2000 mules, Oof. the ballot drop off boxes need to be looked at. Um, one of the one of the areas in our lawsuit is the Article four, Section four of the U.S. Constitution. It's called the, the Guarantee Clause. Mm -hmm. And the federal government is supposed to guarantee that we are free from foreign invasion. But it doesn't say how the foreign invasion is conducted. And right now we have no safeguards in California election law to say China can't submit 30 million ballots. And we have no way to safeguard against it when they, under the guise of covid, have removed all the safeguards in place. But, Mike, do you have reason to believe China submitted 30 million ballots? It's very easy to say I can't prove to you that it wasn't done. You can't prove to me it wasn't done. But do you have reason to believe China submitted 30 million ballots? I've seen no such evidence. I, I don't need the evidence. I have the Constitution, which says any law that allows China to do this 
is unconstitutional because it allows for foreign invasion, whether it's at the ballot box or the shoreline. How can China submit 30 million ballots when you have to be an American citizen in order to even register to vote? How, how is that even possible? Because you can do it through the ballot boxes, no verification needed in California. You can have same day voter registration. You don't have to vote. You can literally walk in on November 8th and say, I've never voted in my life before and I'd like a ballot. Right. They but if you're walking you in and voting that, then you're an American citizen who, who is registering no. to vote. How is China doing that? They can do it at the, they can do it through the boxes, the drop off boxes. See, they can't deny any ballot they receive up until the close of business, November 8th. Right. But then they look at it. And if it's not a registered, if it's not a, if it's not a citizen, then it's an invalid ballot. How do they know it's not a citizen? There's no checks in place. You don't know. They're not even allowed to ask for ID. They don't know if you're a citizen and non-citizen in California. This is the thing. David, but Mike, I'll, Mike, Mike, there were 17 million votes in California. OK, just just hear out the number. There were 17 million votes in California. Biden got 11. Trump got six. When you talk about any one ballot box and you talk about China and 30 million ballots and on and on, even if I grant you that every one of your thousands of affidavits is bona fide proof of some fraud, right? Bona fide proof. When the popular when the voting public is only 17 million people, how on earth do you think that they're going to be able to slip by this number of fraudulent, fake, whatever votes and only a few thousand people submit affidavits? It, it, it's impossible to believe that. Well, then would you join me in calling for an audit of the system? So no, we I, I the see issue no to reason rest. to audit this. There's just but the see, numbers don't add up. There's no reason to audit it. No, if you won the gold medal, we would automatically audit the race. OK, well, the, there should the be Olympic Olympic audit. hundred meter dash is not voting. Did you have no I mean, Mike, that doesn't make any sense. It sounds silly. No, it makes total sense because any competition in the United States, if Tom Brady uses an under inflated football. Yeah, we almost tear the country apart. Why don't we do that for the greatest competition in the land? Which this is sounds the US so silly, though, Mike, it sounds silly. I don't know that this is going to win you the 35th district. I'm not sure. Well, I'm not trying to to, you know, please somebody. I'm oh, trying okay. to say, let's get to the bottom of this issue so that we can all be comfortable with U.S. elections once again. Most people are comfortable. That's the thing. When you poll people, most people are comfortable. No, that's not true. What poll do you maybe, have that suggests that? Well, I, the poll of my district. And I can I can show you that by the amount of people who wait to go to the polling locations because they don't trust. That's not a poll, system. Mike. Most people just vote on Election Day. That doesn't mean they don't trust another system. Listen, Mike, we don't have unlimited time. There's a really other important thing I want to ask you about because sure. I read this about you. Do you believe that a satanic cabal is in charge of the United States? I think there's a satanic cabal running the world. Mm. Yes. And they, and they when go you to say that, like Davos and the World Economic Forum, who are some of the satanic individuals? Well, you've seen a few of them already. They're 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 not hiding it. You look at any profile, high profile uh, rap artist, uh, you you know, from the Clinton camp, uh, I believe Barack Obama has been involved in some of it. Hmm. Um, but you look at the Soroses, you, you look at the Rockefeller types. Um, hmm. but then, but then, Can, I, but Mike, I, I, let's really, so, I want, because sometimes people are so vague Rockefeller type. So, I mean, let me just ask you, is George Soros demonically or satanically possessed? I don't know. You don't know. Is Barack Obama? I don't know. But you just listed both of them. Have you ever asked them? No, I've not spoken. I've never asked them. Anything, I haven't but either. who am I? I can, right. I but what I'm saying look, is I can you, only look at their actions. And do you believe that their actions are evidence of satanic possession? I don't know. But then why are you bringing their names up? Because they're trying to destroy humanity. OK. Who are the Rockefeller types you mentioned? Well, you've seen them. I, I'm not going to get into to, to name dropping right now. I, I'll we'll, we'll deal with that later on. Who will deal with it, though? It seems we would want to know if you have the list. I want to know who these people are. 
Well, if you would get me the the uh, Jeffrey Epstein, Galen Maxwell list, I could probably point to a lot of them. Mike, I got to ask you a serious question here, and I hope you don't take offense. Are most of these satanically possessed people either black or Jewish? Because you're naming a lot of black and Jewish people. I don't know their ethnicity. You don't know Obama's ethnicity. Well, I is he. I don't know what what he sure. claims to be one thing and he's but he's also playing uh, claimed publicly to be another thing. What do you mean? Well, is he a U.S. citizen? Is he an African citizen? Is he, you know, you know, this goes back to the whole, you know, birth certificate uh, argument. Oh, my I God. I don't I don't have a, a an opinion on it. I just know that this man has has presented himself to be one way mm. and then his actions were entirely another way. He's been the most divisive, uh, hate filled president we probably had ever had until Joe Biden, which is really Joe you know, Obama 3.0. Wow. So you don't know what what about Soros and Epstein? Did you know that they're they're Jewish? I, I don't care. You don't care. I don't care. I don't care what they are. I'm hmm. judging them by their actions more right. the content of the character than the color of the skin. So that seems a very superficial argument to bring in. Can satanic possession be cured? Well, if you remove the possessor, I guess so. Yeah. How is that done, though? Well, biblically, it would be through an exorcism or something of that nature. Wow. That sounds extremely serious. Well, are you demonically possessed? Not that I'm aware of. Do, do I seem it to you? No. <laughs> oh, well, I'm just saying so, it sounds so like an exorcism like is very serious. Well, I would say that anyone who's bent on destroying the human race yeah. is probably in league with the one that you would say is the enemy of the human race, and that would be Satan himself. Wow. This is bumming me out, Mike. I'm not going to lie. This is a sad outlook. It's 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 making me uh, sad about about humanity. Well, but but look what just occurred, David. Yeah, we got assaulted by a virus and then a vaccine we were misled by. We've got a Green New Deal that's going to destroy and collapse the U.S. economy. Most and that's just the U.S. Look at what's going on in Europe. Look what's going on in Asia. It's a concerted effort to thin the world of humans. Dear God. And then but now on the other end of that, what's the goal? Why thin the world of humans? Who benefits? Well, if you see people like you and I yeah. made in God's image as your enemy, well, then then, you know, that's a victory for you. You just get rid of the of, of the bad people, essentially. And enough to have sort of an army of slaves, which is if you take communism at its truest form, that's just a small group of people controlling a very large group of people through fear and dependency. So we're looking at a world of slaves that's being run by a few people and they're OK. They seem to be OK with slavery as long as they get to be the new masters. Wow. And that's where your your color component comes in, because it's really not color dependent. It's who gets to play the master this time around. And we have, I believe, more slaves now in the United States because of our open southern border and our ports of entry being wide open than we've ever had. And my opponent is one of the chief Wow. Chief, uh, you know, supporters of the wide open border and I believe is responsible for a lot of the human trafficking that has come out of particularly Guatemala. But well, Mike, listen, I have not seen evidence of that. I will investigate it. I have to say, in total honesty, some of this stuff is pretty out there, even for the Republican Party. So I sort of understand the unendorsement. This is this is some pretty out there stuff that you're 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 saying. But. Just saying it's out there doesn't mean it's not true. It just means you haven't come to terms with That's it. That's absolutely correct. That's absolutely correct. And I, I think that we would all benefit if we would all call for three things, and that's that they would release the Jeffrey Epstein tapes. Okay. And they would release the Glenn Maxwell list. You know, okay. how do you how do you get charged? I want to see that list. With, sure. I know with human trafficking, but but there's no perpetrators. Where the we you know you've got the victims, but you don't have the perps. And then uh, just join me in calling for an audit of the election system so we can put the issue to bed. 
if Joe Biden was fairly elected, I would be the first guy to say, OK, now we've got our our marching orders. Let's fight against it. But if we don't if we're not going to look under the hood and see what happened. Yeah. Then we're we're supporting cheating. Well, Mike Cargyle, you've really said it all. We are going to be very closely watching that race in the 35th Congressional District. And I can't thank you enough for really giving our audience uh, a lot to think about, a lot to chew on for sure. I appreciate your time. Thanks for having me on, David. Anytime. I'm a I'm an open book. And uh, if you want to talk about anything, I think that's the greatest problem right now in the United States is we're everyone's yelling at each other. We must talk. We must talk. We must talk. And we can disagree, but we need to do so with civil discourse.